Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Grow Manchester Green Roof webinar. I'm John Ross from a social enterprise in Manchester called So The City. This webinar is part of a programme we run called Grow Manchester in the UK. It's funded by the NHS to improve access to sustainable food in Manchester. And Growing Manchester itself is a network of around 120 community food growing projects across the city. And over the years, so the city has helped them develop green roofs in their gardens. And we're going to talk through some of the examples that, um, that we've, we've worked on over the years. I'm delighted to see that we've got people from Asia, the Middle East, mainland Europe, the UK and Africa um, today. So it's a really international um, group of participants. And I've got about 40 minutes to talk about green roofs. It's not exactly a new technology, actually, but it's becoming increasingly popular. And I'm a huge fan of them for all sorts of different reasons, which I'll cover. So what we're going to cover today is what a green roof is. And we're going to look at why you might want to build one, what they're made up of. So the different components they've got, some of the types of green roof. Uh, what we need to think about if we actually want to build our own green roof and some examples of some of the green roofs that we've built uh, through Growing Manchester at So The City. And then we've got time to answer some questions at the end. So it should be about half an hour for this, this talking bit that I'm doing. So what is a green roof? Well, a green roof is a roof that's been intentionally covered or par partially covered with vegetation. And um, you know, that isn't a roof where you've got, for example, on my house in Manchester, it's very, very damp and we've got um, some moss growing on uh, the north face of, of our roof. Um, this is an intentionally built roof where you use specific techniques to, to, to construct the roof um, and cover it with vegetation. And it's very common in countries such as Germany and Switzerland where they've got all sorts of buildings like factories, hospitals, schools, offices, etc., that have got green roofs. But it's not just large buildings that can, can have green roofs. You can also build them on quite small um, buildings. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about those in a bit. And there is, a, in terms of how it's built, the vegetation is planted over a waterproof membrane. Um, and it also includes additional layers such as a root barrier and drainage layer, and sometimes also irrigation systems. And if you look out of your windows now, uh, you will probably see other rooftops around. And the chances are that they're pretty lifeless and unappealing. Perhaps they're made of bitumen or asphalt. But roofs don't have to be um, so dull. And with a little bit of effort and imagination, we could change these sterile surfaces into green oases. And there's a huge amount of potential for, for green roofs, uh, you know, across, across all the countries that have got involved today. So the case for green roofs is a really good case for them. They help to cool the room below. So if you've got a top floor of a building, what happens is you get a lot of radiation from the sun going through into the room below. Um, it means it can get very hot. And green roofs can actually cool buildings down, which is going to be increasingly important with uh, climate change impacts and ensuring that we're adapting to climate change. Living rooms can also act as sponges they can retain water rather than allowing it to run off. And this allows the water to evaporate into the atmosphere and it reduces the amount of surface water runoff there is off buildings, which then goes into the drains, into the rivers and can cause flooding, um, which has been quite a problem in Manchester and I'm sure some of the other areas that people are logging in from. In heavy rain rainfall, um, we can reduce the, the amount of flo floods. And this is one of the reasons why uh, green roofs are actually a legal requirement in countries like Germany, for example. Green roofs can improve the lifespan of the roof as well. Uh, this it really it's provide, providing a, a protective covering for the roof itself to 
uh, reduce damage from frost and also from UV radiation from the sun. And they can provide habitat or they do provide habitat, although this does vary a little bit depending on the planting that you choose and the design of the green roof. Uh, they look nice, obviously, and they also can help whole cities keep cool um, or, or not get as hot, um, something called the urban heat island effect. So you'll find that in a, in a region, a city is always a bit warmer, a couple of degrees warmer than, than it is outside of a city. And a lot of that's to do with the amount of concrete that there is in cities and, and hard standing. And that's all absorbing the, the heat from the sun and then radiating it back back out and uh, green roofs don't behave in that way they 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 take in the seat they, they don't radiate out the, the sun's heat so much and so they can sort of cool cities down actually which is going to again be increasingly important as we um as the the earth's climate uh, warms so there's various components to a green roof and it feels a little bit like companies are selling these products actually to try and make it as complicated as possible um, and a bit more than maybe they need to be. And I'm going to show you a simple way to be, build a green roof. But in the most complex roofs, you will end up with all of these different layers. So plants, well, actually, you can grow pretty much anything on a green roof, even trees. But it depends on how much growing medium you've got. So... And, and that in turn depends really on how strong your roof is. So um, roofs will only support a certain amount of soil and soil can get really heavy as it gets wet, for example, when it rains. So, you know, a really big consideration with a green roof is making sure that it's structurally able to take the load of the, the plants and the growing medium and also sometimes the people that are on that roof. And we've got the next layer down is a filter fabric. And this is a layer that stops the soil from migrating down into the layers below. So it, it, it's just a filter really. And then below that we have a drainage layer. The drainage layer is mainly for flat roofs and it's an area that allows water to flow away from the plants because some plants don't like to get waterlogged. And uh, what you'll find is that the when you buy these products, which are you know widely available online, and um, the filter fabric and the drainage layer, and sometimes even the root barrier are actually all one um, one unit. And so yeah, you won't need to have all of these separate layers. Actually, you can get products which will do quite a few of those layers in one. And then you have a root barrier. And that is to ensure that the roots from the plants don't go through and damage the waterproof membrane. Um, because if you were growing particularly, you know, I don't know, things like, you know, shrubs and trees, those roots can be really strong and they can go down and um, damage the roof. And of course, it's really, really important that once you've built a green roof that you don't need to uh, redo the waterproofing because it's going to be underneath lots of stuff and that's going to be make it really hard to maintain okay so yeah it's not necessarily it's not necessary to include all of these layers and i'm going to show you some examples where we've only used a few of them to create successful green roofs So there's two main types of roofs. I didn't want to get too into this because again, I think it's almost a way of making things more complicated than they need to. Um, but there's extensive living roofs and these are ones where it's probably easier to call them um, a, a shallow living roof. And these are ones where you've only got around five to 10 centimeters of soil. And these are really lightweight green roofs and they're easily maintained. And they're also the most common. Um, they, they use a sort of shallow soil system, which often dries out. And that means that you need to use drought tolerant plants for this roof because it's, 
you know, the 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 sorts of um, plants that we've got there on that roof are, are sedum, and that's a that's the sort of plant that you know you might find around the coast in the UK where there's a little bit less rain, or in in rocky areas, maybe in some of the the, the mountains, and it's able to survive with just a really small amount of soil. This sedum you can buy in rolls in the UK that can be rolled onto the roof and it can look really attractive, particularly if you use lots of different types of seed sedum for the variety. So you can see the different colors there, that's different varieties of sedum. Um, the, the, the issue is that it's got a fairly low wildlife value and this sort of roof, of course, isn't really designed for, um, not really designed for walking on as well. So. Um, if you look at the next example, this, these ones are called intensive rather than, rather than extensive living roofs. And they tend to have, you know, more than 10 centimeters of soil. I suspect this roof here is probably more like 50 centimeters or more than that of soil. So much deeper substrate. Of course, that means they're much, much heavier. And so structural issues are much more important. There's going to be more maintenance required for a roof like this. It's it's basically a, a kind of a, a sort of standard garden, really. Um, it's going to be more drought tolerant, and that means that you can plant plants that are able to, um, you know, that, that need more water, and you're going to have a bigger range of species available for planting. Uh, we're working on a similar roof to this at our center in Moss Side in Manchester called the Boiler House and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that project later. So first of all I'm going to talk through a really simple example of a green roof. So this is a small project we completed a few years ago in Manchester for a community group in Openshaw and it was one of our first green roofs. It was an old shipping container on the right hand side that blue shipping container and I, sh I should imagine everybody knows what a shipping container is and they've got a flat roof it's just basically a metal box and they're ideal for green roofs actually because they're very very strong they're designed to be stacked with hundreds of tons worth of um you know things stored in them and they're also waterproof and i'll just show you how how we built that now so the green roof was constructed in the following way from the top down for the plants, we had herbs, and then the growing medium, you can see there, now it's a mix. What we did is we took sand, perlite, and compost, and we mixed it about 30% for each. So a third uh, for each, and then gave it a good mix around. And we used buckets to get that up onto the roof. Um, we've built the edge of the green roof using six by two, treated timber boxes so 150 millimeters by 50 millimeters treated waterproof timber to contain the growing medium then we used a just below that you can just about see it we've got a filter fabric um sorry we, we didn't include a filter fabric or a drainage layer um and what we what we did use it of course is perlite is in in that mix is really good for drainage so you'll find that this sort of mix won't really get too waterlogged this is a flat roof so waterlogging can be can be an issue actually um but but we found that that was that was sufficient i think actually the roof itself probably wasn't ex completely flat uh so there will have been a very small um fall on this roof which meant that there was some drainage and, and water wasn't completely pooling and then we had a root barrier which is this geotextile membrane that black fabric there and that just stops the um the roots as i say from sort of going down in towards the the, the container itself and then we had a waterproofing layer which was visqueen um, which is just plastic layer sort of building material that's used for roofing to uh, stop the, the water from, you know, from going into the shipping container. Although, of course, the shipping containers are waterproof themselves anyway, so it's sort of double protection. Um, here's some of the plants that we planted. So it's mainly fairly drought tolerant Mediterranean herbs. So we've got some, I think that's probably thyme there. And here's a picture of some of the guys looking happy um, after they completed the green roof, which took about a day. 
And as I say, it's grown really well since then. This was a similar project that we did for another community garden in Manchester. And we added a few extra features. So you can see there that there's some logs that we put as part of the green roof. And they uh, just provide additional bits of habitat for invertebrates, um, you know, insects, so that we, you know, we increase the, the wildlife value of the roof. We also planted wildflowers, which is that sort of top right area of the roof there. And we have a tiny little water feature there as well, which would be good for birds to be able to come and, and drink and bathe on the rooftop. Okay, so another project we worked on was for an urban gardening festival in Manchester called Dig the City. Uh, again, it was for growing Manchester um, for, for, for this network. Uh, it was built in 2015 and it was part of a event installation we did where we created an old allotment shed and we had recordings of people talking about their experiences of being in their community garden. So you could sort of walk into that shed and, and you know, hear those recordings and really just escape the, the hustle and bustle of the city and kind of get into a, a sort of bird song playing in there as well. So just, just, to, just to sort of relax really. And we uh, included a sedum green roof. And unfortunately, I haven't got a better picture of this, but if you think back to the first picture of that sedum roof I showed you at the start, it's pretty much like that. And what I wanted to mention was that we have a pitch on that roof of around 10 degrees. So this isn't a flat rooftop, which means that there is quite good drainage. So we didn't have a drainage layer on this roof and the water, you know, the rain just kind of comes down and just naturally drains off, off the roof. So it's quite, if you have a, a small pitch on a roof, that's actually quite good for a green roof because it, it just saves saves money kind of and, and complexity with having those other layers. And again, what's worth saying about the pitch is that you can have too much of a, of a pitch on a roof. And that means that the runoff will be too fast and the roof will dry out too easily. And I'll show you an example of that in a minute. Uh, the shed was also uh, strengthened, especially for this green roof. So we've only got around 10 centimeters of soil on top of the roof, but that very quickly mounts up into, particularly if it rains and that gets wet, into a, a huge amount of weight. And of course, a standard shed isn't really designed to have an extra, say, two tons of weight on, on its roof. So we asked the company that made the sheds to strengthen the, the shed up and, and, and include, you know, extra joists inside and also um, extra uprights and bracing to ensure that the roof was strong enough to be able to support this extra weight from the sedum and, and the substrate underneath it. And this is the shed a couple of years later, and it's gone to a center for people, um, a day center for people with learning disabilities, and they store their tools and equipment there. And they've actually planted it up with some, some different plants now. And as you can see, they've got those logs in there as well. So they've created a bit more of a wildlife friendly sort of green roof uh, than this, this sort of original sedum one that we, we, we built. This is actually before all of those projects and an older project I did with a uh, city of trees, which is, um, you know, another organization based in Manchester. It was through their little green roofs project in around 2014, I think. And you can see from this photo that how the roof is constructed a little bit better. And um, that's the visqueen layer. Um, you can see the six by two treated timber there, which acts, this is actually a sloped, slightly sloped roof. And the timber also acts as a, a terrace really to stop the soil from falling off the roof. And to some extent, it also helps to keep the roof, uh, the water on the roof and make sure that the soil stays um, fairly moist because those sloping roofs, as I say, have got a bit of a tendency to dry out a little bit quicker. This is a really well-known roof that we've been involved with in Manchester. So it's in the middle of the Northern Quarter, which is a, a famous uh, part of Manchester city centre. It wasn't designed by us, but we've run volunteer sessions planting it up and it's about 80 years or so now uh, old. 
it's actually got quite a high pitch on the roof. And the reason for that was that people can see uh, the plants growing. And so, you know, because particularly because we've got tourists in that area, it was, it was, it, it just makes sense to, to make it as visible as possible. But what has happened, you can just about see actually, maybe if you're on a, on a big screen, but the box on the um, bottom left, the soils just start to slip down towards the, the timber. And so the terracing is, is not working so well. That means there's a slightly less deep section of soil at the top end of that box. And we've also found with this green roof that it's drying out really easily. And that is more of a problem at the moment. In Manchester, we've had probably four or five years now where we get a very um, big drought in the spring, very, very hot weather. And that's meant that the waters, um, the, the roofs needed to be watered with, uh, actually we haven't got irrigation systems. So we've needed to use, um, some of the volunteers have used a watering can. So that's been really hugely labor intensive. And what's happened is some of the plants have died over, you know, these droughts. And, but what's the encouraging thing is that the, the new plants have come and, um, uh, colonized the green roof. And this is a sort of wildlife type green roof and really we're not so fussy about maintaining particular species on the roof what you will find is that even if you don't plant up a roof particularly plants will um you know seeds will start to land on the roof and different species will start to grow and of course a lot of wildflowers uh in the uk at least really quite like quite poor soils so you can have quite interesting uh, flowers growing on a roof, you know, just naturally, actually. Here's another, you can see there on that photo, uh, how the soil's slipping down a little bit. The volunteers were just planting up the roof with, well, with some new, um, you know, some new wildflower plug plants. And we also put some of those logs in there as well at the top for for extra sort of wildlife value for invertebrates. This is a much bigger project that we're working on and a much more complicated one at the Boiler House, which is our center in Manchester. And we're working on it now. And it comprises of a decking area, which is all of those slats there, interspersed with blocks of green roof. And then round the edge of, of this, this area, there's, there's planters actually. So that big, um, sort of backward C shape all the way around the edge is planters. And I'll show you some photos in a minute. Um, but what the planters do is they stop, they provide a barrier to stop people falling off the roof. Um, to the left on that drawing is, is, is an office actually. And to the right, um, this is a first story. Um, green roof um, is, is a drop down on, onto the ground level. Um, so there's decking, which provides a walkway so people can kind of move around the green roof. So it's not a, a green roof just for, just for wildlife. We wanted it to be somewhere that had some amenity value as well. There is around 15 centimeters of substrate. So it's quite a um, a thicker roof and then around the edge it's actually got around 60 centimeters for those planters it's a more complex project we needed to get planning permission for it because we have um, something called balustrading basically a rail all the way around which changes the external appearance of the building so we need to get planning permission in the UK for that and we also need to get building control approval again from the local authority and that's required because it it potentially could collapse. So we needed to ensure that we got the sufficient, um, you know, kind of um, calculations done to ensure that it was strong enough for, for all of this additional weight. Uh, we had a budget of around 20,000 pounds and we have had to think about overturning. So there's two sort of structural aspects to, to a roof like this. One is that the roof, um, you know, collapses downwards. But another consideration is that if you've got people on a green roof, you need to be careful that if there's a few people that they don't, you know, walk or 
you know, I don't know, run into the barrier around the green roof and then fall off the green roof as well. So you have this, this you have to do these calculations looking at the, the loading, um, but also the, the overturning with this balustrading, if that makes sense. And uh, what we've done here, which is a little bit clever, is that we've used the planters are attached to the rail and that that sort of an inertia means that the um that the and weight means that the um the barrier is less likely to overturn so we've used the sort of weight of the green roof itself i suppose to to create a, a sort of structurally secure uh, barrier and i will show a photo and that will probably make a bit more sense then and one other consideration before i leave this slide is is delivery so just making sure that we got the so we had the soil craned onto the roof and we needed to make sure that that was craned uh, the deliveries themselves also didn't over um overload the roof in terms of their um you know the structural um strength of the roof itself uh, it's pretty much a flat roof so the slope is is we we've we've sort of created a slope of about one in 50 just to prevent pooling there is um a drainage gully as well at one end of the roof so the water can drain off we've got a it's a bitumen roof so it's an existing roof actually which provides the waterproofing layer and then we've got a a drainage layer and a filter fabric in one and then we're adding a substrate uh, which we bought from the um, the company that provides the uh, green roof um, uh, wildlife um, plants that we've bought for the green roof and yeah that's kind of the build of it and you can see those planters around the edge which are providing a barrier to stop people falling off the roof and also those posts sticking out as well well they're attached to the to the planters and the weight of the plants themselves is is meaning that those those um, those posts you know are strong enough to, to to stop people from falling off the roof. And another picture here of uh, the, the 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 sort of balustrading and the, the the planters themselves. And the timber we used for the project was larch timber, which is waterproof naturally it's, it's got a sort of um, weather resistance and it's also locally grown to Manchester and uh, it's not treated timber um, and yeah it's um, it's got that nice kind of orangey color to it this is the last ex case study example again I haven't actually got a picture of the green roof aspect but we put a green roof onto this it's a bug hotel and it's part of a green health walk we're doing actually for for a hospital in manchester and it it just it it, it just shows that you know any kind of small structure um maybe it's a compost heap or you know maybe it's a, like a bin store or um a lean to or a shed they can all take a, a green roof. Uh, it's really quite easy to, to, to fix one onto the top. And a basic green roof in this case was, you know, literally just a board of timber, some waterproof material like a you know a pond liner or some vis visqueen, and then just putting some some soil on top of that and planting some plants into it. So it, it's not rocket science really to build a, a simple green roof. And of course, you don't really, really need to think so much about structural considerations or, you know, or planning permission for, for something small like this. So just to summarize, uh, small intensive green roofs don't have to be too complicated. You could do a small structure with, you know, basic DIY skills. But if you're looking at a bigger project and an intensive green roof, you're going to need to start to get a structural engineer involved, which we did for the bigger project. You need to think a bit more carefully about the design. You'll probably need to have more layers in, in the roof as well. There's various considerations when you're building a green roof, how much money you've got to big one, but also structural requirements, planning requirements, 
whether you're really interested in wildlife for the green roof or whether you want people to be using it, uh, the sun and the drainage. So that, that affects the sorts of plants that you will be able to grow and also the slope of the green roof. So if you've got a, a, um, a pitch on the roof, which is, um, you know, if you have a bigger pitch, then you will, you will end up with a slightly drier roof. You might have to think about, um, uh, irrigation systems or, um, you know, or maybe terracing the roof a little bit to try and maintain some of the, the moisture. Okay. So just the couple of bits of further reading, if you're interested. So we, to prepare this presentation, I did quite a lot of reading. The Natural England Living Roofs Guide is really good from 2007. Uh, we often use for our smaller green roofs some of these ones that you've seen. I've pointed out, you know, on the bug hotel or on the shipping container or, or on the shed. Actually, the DIY guide to green and living roofs, and that is uh, written by Dusty Gedge and a couple of other authors, I think. And I think that's around ten pounds or something. You can get that as an ebook as well. And then there's also a code of practice there, the GRO code of practice, which which might be interesting, which is probably more relevant for for bigger projects where you've got more considerations to think about. So that is it from me. And I um, will now try and answer some of your questions. OK, um, thanks, John. Um, so not so many questions in so if anyone has any more uh just type them in um but i'll just go through some of the comments and questions we do have uh, a lot of people um i think in the philippines saying that they don't um see many green roofs around so that's kind of interesting there's a bit of vertical farming and and um green walls kind of stuff going on but not so many green roofs um uh, Michael says, uh, does this work in all weather? We have two kinds of weathers here in Liberia, a six month of intensive rainfall and another six months of intensive sunshine. So I don't know uh, what your input is there, John, but. I'll try. Uh, is there any others? Uh, yeah, just, we'll just, uh, we'll go through some more after. Yeah. Okay. No, yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. Um, so, um, yeah, so there was that sort of point about the Philippines, them not having green roofs. And uh, I mean, I've, I guess it's, it, you know, that you'll have a sort of like a rainy season there, I guess, in a dry season and, and a sort of cooler season, I, I'm guessing. Um, and I, I, I mean, we don't have very many green roofs in the UK. Um, it's, I, I can, it, in Manchester, which is, you know, a two million, you know, person population city, I can, I guess there's, you know, there's certainly sort of larger ones. There's probably only five or 10, um, in the whole city. Um, I don't know if you, what you think, Emily, but I think it's, it's not, there's not oh, I mean, less yeah. than that. Even I, 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 I can't think so many, is that right? Would you say? Yeah, I think you, you, there's sometimes there's, there's green roofs there and you don't even know they're there because you can't see high up mm. enough. Um, True. some of these um, newer sort of more, uh, sustainably built buildings in the center of manchester they do have green roofs and when you get a different um perspective you get a bit high you can see quite a few of them yeah um, yeah totally i i, I think w in manchester i got well you know i don't know about the philippines so much but the, the issue in, in manchester is that the the you know the sort of the the city council and the um you know, and, and, uh, you know, and, and actually the government actually of the whole of the UK as well, and um, don't have all of the regulations really to, to encourage developers to, to build, uh, green roofs, uh, for new developments. So there is, there is various, there is, you know, there, there are, there are kind of various requirements that, that developers have to think about, including flooding and, um, you know, and wildlife and, and, it, but it, it, it's not so strict here in terms of, of, of requiring developers to put green roofs in. It's certainly not essential for, for development. So I think that's the issue here. And I should, should imagine in, if you compare here to say Germany, they're, they're, you know, they're all over the place and Switzerland, 
And I should imagine in, in the Philippines, it's probably because the government's probably not really sort of backing it so much at the moment. And um, it might well be that they should think about doing that because, as I say, uh, it does it, it, it does reduce flood flooding. You know, it, it can increase the, the lifespan of, of the roof. It's good for wildlife. Um, it can reduce the urban heat island effect. So there's all sorts of reasons why they're, why, why they're good things. Yeah. And then the second point was about Liberia and green roofs. I wasn't really expecting that question. Um, but uh, I mean, I, I think that it's a bit of a bit of a um, you know a silly answer in a way, but I, I just think that if you can you know what what is the natural vegetation of Liberia, it it can survive through the six months drought for the, for the rainy season. So really, I, I talked a bit about some of the that Stevenson Square green roof that, and really that's you know we have we've have been having these droughts in the UK and in the spring, but we've still found that the green roofs are sort of regenerating when the rain starts again and seeds are sort of coming in. So I think for a green roof in Liberia, you probably need to, to accept that, that things are going to sort of die down in, in, in that dry season. And then, and then the roof's going to, you know, not, not be as green <laughs> for that period. Otherwise you're going to have to do a lot of irrigation to, to, to you know to sort of keep keep the, the roof going and you can use automatic irrigation systems i haven't we haven't done a project like that and i haven't talked about that because of that but um you can you can irrigate a green roof with you know with drip irrigation for example or soaker hoses and you know that could be on a on a automatic um you know timer and stuff so you don't really even have to to sort of do it yourself as it were but you will need to have a water supply and and an electricity supply for for you know for the rooftop sort of area. Okay, a few more questions uh, coming in now, um, and and just some comments. Uh, Jason was saying, um, well, he actually he, he works. He's part of a, an agricultural college, so that's kind of interesting over in the Philippines. He said maybe we can incorporate cocoa coirs. In the media, in the medium to lessen soil erosion, there's plenty of that here in the Philippines. Yeah, um, absolutely. And we have used, yeah, I mean, we use it a little bit here in the UK because actually, it's, it's. I should imagine it's really good value over over there. I mean, even here, it's, it, it, you know, it's, it, it's roughly comparable to the price of of compost actually, and it's got pretty good drainage hasn't it um Koya? so i'd say that would be a really good thing to to use um for say a flat green roof just to stop the you know the water from po pooling um i think if you if you were from that you know jason's from that area he probably knows you know how well Koya kind of works as a substrate you know better than i um I mean, this, this, obviously you have to be thinking about nutrients as well, just as if you were growing plants on, you know, on at ground level. So I think it's pretty low in terms of its nutrient nutrients. So you might want to be sort of using fertilizer as well. But yeah, I think Koya and, and you know, other, I just, I, what other substrates are there? I mean, yeah, bits of, we've used sand before as well, you know, to mix. So I think I covered that and, and also perlite or vermiculite. Mm -hmm. You know, compost. Um, yeah, that's all good stuff. Li lighter as well, which might be good. Yeah, it's yeah, it's a bit lighter. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I think that's because it's actually got probably a bit better drainage because mm -hmm. it's the it's the water yeah. it's the water that really adds to the weight. It's yeah. a, you know, compost itself isn't that heavy, but it sort of doubles in weight when when it's when it's wet, and you have to um, factor in that the roof is going to be completely soaked and is going to have plants, you know, growing on it as well. And maybe some people on it as well. You have to factor in that worst case scenario with the weight and the loading. Yeah. Um, Mar uh, Marjorie was asking about the materials used. I think you kind of went through that quite thoroughly, actually. Um, yeah, I mean, I can, I can, you know, I can send some, we, we can email through just like a couple of examples of the, 
of like the products if that's helpful that, yeah. that we use here in the uk i mean i'm not sure whether these guys will ship it out internationally to, mm. to different countries oh, it probably will actually yeah. <laughs> since there's the way things are going but um probably not the the actual plants themselves but maybe some of these these sort of layers of and um, the drainage layers and things like that we could show you know email some examples that's fine some of the more simple makeshift kind of like small scale uh green roofs uh, you could just use whatever really couldn't you different mm. plastic and kind of things anything you can find locally yeah it, it's quite logical really i hope that got across because I, I i know it's almost it's like kind of a bit of a dark art really green roofs and and people it, as i say what happens is that there's various companies that sell the products that to try and make it sound as complicated as possible um i guess so that they can charge a bit more money for some of that, those products but really it's it, it's not that simple and it's quite logical the fact that you need to you know put a layer in to stop the roots from damaging the waterproofing on the roof or you know put a layer in to to make sure that the water can get off the roof you know a drainage layer so i think it's fairly logical actually to, for me anyway although i've been sort of you know involved making them and things a few times now so um yeah got some experience i think maybe uh we cover this because jason was saying that uh he, he was asking if you think that this can be promoted as a mitigation effort for urban the urban heat island effect yeah absolutely i, I think that's one of the biggest advantages mm. of of green roofs uh, I, and i think if you if you just uh, you know i'm i'm not really up to date on the, the sort of scientific research around green roofs we you know i've sort of read guidance documents but i haven't sort of delved into the science so much but i think if you just type in you know into the internet um green roofs and the urban heat island in fact i'm sure there's all sorts of research by um you know sort of environmental engineers for example into exactly that um because it should be fairly easy to 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 measure the difference between a roof that's that's got you know a bitumen kind of um or concrete finish compared to a green roof you know and and sort of check the temperature differences and stuff so yeah yeah albedo and all that kind of thing yeah exactly yeah yeah um art was saying that he's currently building a greenhouse over his roof deck for his or maybe he means a green roof over his roof deck for his urban garden so that's great um uh, other people saying that they've seen uh, green roofs on the TV and that it's like roof landscaping and that they're interested in, in uh, having a go with themselves. Um, Art is also saying, uh, it's also asking, will moisture resulting from the garden affect the physical strength of the concrete roof deck? Yeah, well, that's, that's, that's why you need to include, I mean, I'm not an expert in concrete and of course I think there's there's a lot of different types of concrete and some of them are probably more waterproof than others but just to be sure you would probably include a you know another waterproofing layer so uh, that would be a sort of you know over the concrete you would put a plastic layer and I mean it's the, the very best plastic layer is probably that butyle which is used for for ponds here a lot in the uk and you can get really thick butyle uh, rubber which lasts for you know it can last for 40 50 years but then you know as i've sort of pointed out a couple of times you need to make sure that the roots don't go down into that butyle and then of course you know of course as soon as they puncture it then it, it's you know it's useless so and um, that's that's where all these sort of different layers come in Yeah, okay. Um, I was going to ask John about um, using green roofs for for uh, agriculture, growing print vegetables, because I know there's a few examples in kind of um, built up areas in, in New York and things like this, where they have big uh, community gardens on roofs or um, productive sort of fruit and veggie gardens. Yeah, I, I wonder actually, Emily, if you could, I don't know if you can actually do this, but you could put a uh... I wouldn't actually, it's probably me, but putting a photo of Brooklyn Grange or um, Rooftop Farm, which I 
I, I'm, I'm not sure I can do that right now. But if people Google it, uh, you can have a look at it. And it's about, it's probably like half an acre. So it's huge. And it's in Brooklyn. So just next to Ma- Manhattan, it's the other side of the river. And I've been to visit actually. And they have, um, you know, they have a whole sort of market garden there. So they're growing fruit and vegetables and this huge area on a rooftop there in Brooklyn. And they sell the vegetables from the roof and you can go up and if you're ever over there, you can go up and have a look at it as well. Uh, they've, they've imported, they're growing, they don't have sort of planters up there. They've just put a lot of soil on the roof. So I think from what I could gather, they've got about maybe 30 centimeters or so of soil on the roof. I'm not exactly sure how it was built up in terms of the different layers that they've done before that. But yeah, they had, they had tomatoes growing up there and, um, chard and, you know, not root crops particularly, but all sorts of, of other crops. Uh, it's quite a, quite a famous project really that one. So yeah, yeah. It's a good point actually, Emily. Yeah. I mean, there's, there is the potential for, for, for growing food as well on roofs. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was saying, you know, if people, uh, like, a, in the Philippines and things where it's, I think it's the highest density population in the world. Um, this is opportunities for growing in urban areas, right? Um, agriculture and growing food locally yeah. and that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that's about it for questions now. Um, yeah. Anything else to add, John? No, I mean, uh, uh, you know, go out there and, you know, have a go. Uh, and um, obviously be safe with it as well. So, you know, you might want to get an engineer involved with those those sorts of bigger projects. But, and we, I think we'd be really interested to, if people do, you know, build green roofs. It'd be amazing to, 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 to see what you've done. So feel free to, to email through examples of, of what, what you've been building. Uh, we've also got, uh, you know, we've got Facebook, and uh twitter as well so there's a so the city facebook um and twitter page as well so yeah and instagram and instagram as well yeah it'd be amazing to see some particularly these these green roofs and you know in in liberia or, or or philippines or whatever so yeah yeah great okay okay thanks for, thanks for attending everybody and maybe see you next week yep